God is so good. I was listening to a song before Carol had to bring me to church out early, so I'll be in here early, so I'll get you out as soon as I can. Um, but I was listening to a song in the car before we got out, and it's one that I love so dearly, and the ladies, and they all sing it. Is it well with your soul? Yes. Yeah. If you can listen to that song, and you can feel good yeah. about what it says, you're okay. Yeah, thank you, Lord. You're okay. I found that to be a real truth in my life. But it's good and it's a privilege to stand and bring the Word of God. I had uh, had this message upon my mind and heart for some time. I to listened to Brother Rick and a certain thing he spoke of because this was about a certain man. Uh -huh. And Brother Rick had mentioned that this. Yeah. there's a certain man, of course, we've been studying, but a lot of times they don't put a name on that man. Mm -hmm. But in this chapter, we have a name. And I would just like you to go with me into Acts chapter 10, a chapter that should be very familiar with you. Yeah. And if it's not familiar with you, then you need to study it. Mm -hmm. Because it's the reason you're sitting here today. Amen. Because of a man of the name of Cornelius. Mm -hmm. The first one to in the Gentile nation to be by faith brought into the church Thank of God. And I, as I read it, and it's in a, much, a big three part, and I probably can only get to a portion that it will light on, but let me read the first 20 verses. Starting off with chapter 10 verse 1. He said there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian man, a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and the Jews, and provided to God always and prayed. He saw a vision eventually about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God came into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, The prayers of thy alms are come up for a memorial before God. Amen. And now send a man to Joppa and call for one Simon for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodges with one Simon of Tanner, whose house is by the seaside. And he shall tell thee, now listen, he shall tell thee yeah. what thou ought to do. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier, of them and waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to John. And on the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to yeah. pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. Mm -hmm. And saw heaven open, and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheep <coughs> knit at the four corners, and led down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. <clears throat> but Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time. What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. Amen. This was now twins three times, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. And while Peter doubted in himself what the vision which he had seen would mean, 
Behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry of Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, was lodged there. And while Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Yes. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent thee. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your grace. And Lord, for your mercy and for the love that you've shown on to us. And Lord, we just ask you now that, Lord, you take your word. Lord, if there's one here that, Lord, doesn't know you as their Savior, that they would realize the need. And Lord, that they would come on to you. And Father, we just ask you now, take everything it's said and done, that it might be pleasing first unto you. And Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I like that. There was a certain man. Yes, amen. And but, praise God, we've got his name. His name was Cornelius. Yeah. And he was a centurion, a Roman, mm -hmm. a man of authority, a man of power. Yeah. Matter of fact, he was over, I guess, at least a hundred or so men. Right. And uh, he had used to having control. And I like what it says about him because it said he was a devout man. Yeah. Now, if you've ever looked up, a devout man is one that's active mm -hmm. in worship yeah. and prayer. Mm -hmm. One that likes to go to church. Now, he couldn't go to the temple because permitted to go in and right. play sacrifice. But he actively, every day, sought God. He prayed. He worshiped. Yeah. And you know that he knew everything because he was a Roman soldier. And if you study and you study Greek theology and you study the Roman history, you realize the pagan gods that they worshipped. Mm -hmm. And you, we know why Rome fell is because of the sin within. Right. Just as why America is going to fall. Yeah. Amen. Because of the sin within. But this man seen something. I like Brother Rick read this some time ago. You wonder what, what did he see that gave him a desire to see God? Mm -hmm. Well, then I thought about Romans. And Rick had preached this. Well, could a man in Africa that never met anybody know God? Mm -hmm. But Romans is very clear to the fact, if you turn... To Romans 1, verse 20, he said, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Amen. Being understood by the things that are what? That are made. Yep. That are all around us. Mm -hmm. The glory of God. How can you deny that a God created yep. all things and are made even his internal power in God is so that they are without yes. excuse. And I thought, how real that must have been to the centurion. Because, and I'm sure he saw some other things in those that did worship God. Amen. And that's why I said, I like that coming in that says, let your little light shine. Yeah. Someone might see it. Yeah, and they might realize he got something. And he realized they had something that he wanted. Mm -hmm. He was tired of that old pagan religion. Amen. He wanted a God and he knew there was one God. Yep. And only one God. And he sought after that Lord. God. Yes. For he was a devout man and one that feared God. And what is the beginning of wisdom? Amen. Fear. And he was a he was a man. He didn't fear. He didn't have to fear anybody. He had all the protection that he needed. The Jews were under his power, and he didn't want to be a Jew. Now, don't get me wrong. Right. He didn't want to be circumcised. He wanted the God that they had, but he didn't want necessarily all the laws that they followed. Mm -hmm. But he did practice yep. a great deal of things. And what did he do? 
He also met the needs of many individuals in the community. He was well spoken of. Yeah, amen. Isn't that nice? Wouldn't you be like to be well spoken of? When you die, I, I always like Scrooge at Christmas time. Uh huh. <laughs> the death angel came. And he said, Who is that? He says, That's that old Scrooge. And they're going through his clothes and talking about how sorry he was. Yeah. And you wonder, what will they say when they look at you? Mm -hmm. I had a brother in law, I had nothing good to say about him, whether he was dead or alive. Because there was nothing good to say about him. He beat my sister. He was worthless. Except to God. Yeah. But Cornelius was a devout man. And he feared God with what? With all his house. He had all his house. Mm -hmm. Practice. What he believed. You know, that's, that's the difference, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. That's what we would love to have all our house. Yeah. Believe. The way we believe. Then they wouldn't be into the things that they are. That's right. Amen. And he gave alms to the people and prayed to God in all ways. Mm -hmm. And then God, he got God's attention. You know, it says, who gets God's attention? Those that what? Seek after him. Yep. Those that come to church. I say, hey, get them in the church. Why? If you don't get them in the church, how are they going to get under the Word of God? Right. Cornelius was a good man. But he was a lost man. It gives us such a good example of a great deal of people that play church. Yeah. And those that are really good. I've known people that were better than most church folks I knew. But they wouldn't darken the door. Of a church. Yeah. But he got God's attention. He saw a vision, eventually about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming to him, saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked to him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said to him, The prayers of thy alms are come up for a memorial. I want you to pay attention to this. For a memorial before God. Yeah. Now, I love to go to the Webster, but I've seen something different. When I look at Memorial, I always think it's something just like Joshua as he put on the sea and Rick Peter saw them many times and they carried the stones out that they could come back and see and have a memorial, that they could look back and remember what God had done. Yeah. And here I looked to that meaning and here it had another statement. Because see, it came up as the, I, I thought of the Egyptian and when Israel came out of Egypt, how they finally got God's attention. But here is a, a little bit of what it said a statement sent to a government or person in authority, usually given facts and asking that some wrong, some wrong be corrected. Sure. Do you understand? I ask myself, what happened? This is 10 years after Pentecost. Yeah. 10 years. And they have not went on to the Gentile people. Yeah. And I looked and I asked myself, why did it take so long? When you read this and just read through it, you don't stop and think about what is the time frame here. Right. And I looked at that because in Matthew, go with me into Matthew 28. <clears throat> Verses 19, he says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost, yeah. teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. And in Mark, I like what it says. It says, go to all the world. Yeah. Not just to the Jews. What took so long? <coughs> I 
there was a lot of prejudice going on at this time. You know, all of us, one time or another, had some kind of a prejudice in our life. I always wonder, what does that bring on? Some of it just because someone's rich. Mm -hmm. Boy, you hear a lot of that today. Let's spread the wealth. Yeah, that's right. I'm glad I worked for somebody who was rich. I had a job. Mm -hmm. I'm glad he made money. Yeah, amen. And we hear a lot of this, black lives only. Boy, I'm glad God didn't think that way. That's right. He went, when he went to Cornelius, he didn't say Jews only. Mm -hmm. But I wonder, why did it take so long? And I like when I looked at a verse there, a little bit further in the scripture, and I looked a little bit about what was going on. But I like what the Lord said on to <clears throat> Wagner. I had no idea. But God has his own timetable. <coughs> so I sure can't differ <coughs> with what he has to say Amen. and do. We wonder, as we study the minor prophets, they always ask, Lord, why so long? What's holding you? It is all in his time. Aren't you glad that he's got a timetable? Sure. That we might see our family safe? Mm -hmm. That he does decide to come back right now. Amen. How many would wind up in hell? Right. No, I'm so glad. But I like what Cornelius did. Because he told him, he said, Now send a man to Joppa and call on Simon Peter. Yeah. And what did he do? The angel spoke to Cornelius was departed, and he called two of his household servants and devout soldiers, and when they waited on him continually, and when he had declared all things unto them, he sent them on to Joppa. Mm -hmm. He done as the Lord commanded him to do. He said, Who do I love? He said, Who loves me? Those that keep my commandments. Right. He showed his love and his trust in God by doing exactly what God mm -hmm. told him to do. But then I wonder, why did he call and send for Peter? Do you know Philip was only a few miles away? Preaching to Samaria. If you look at the map, Samaria, in Caesarea and Joppa lays to the south. Do you wonder why didn't he call for him? There was a reason. And this is what a lot of people don't realize. Go with me back into Matthew. But I like what he told him. I said, go get a preacher. Before I go. He said, go get a preacher. And yeah, I, I didn't want to go that direction yet. Go with me in the Romans. Because the Lord knowed what Cornelius needed. And he had prepared. Yeah. That's where I go to that, where I like that. It says, you shall tell thee what thou should do. Yeah. That's so important. <laughs> but over in Romans, in chapter 10, for his scripture said, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon his name of the Lord shall be saved. Yeah. And when they when shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? Now Cornelius believed in God, didn't he? <clears throat> yeah, right. Did Cornelius believe in God? It says there that he did. He went there every day. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you what James said about believing in God. He said, Thou believest that there is one God? 
thou doest well. Amen. The devil also believeth and is troubled. Yeah, amen. And another key fact here that he <laughs> paid many alms, done many works. Yeah. That don't get you saved. Not right, amen. It don't get you saved. It don't get you into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. But they sent for a preacher. That's a good thing, isn't it? Amen. Don't wait till you're dying on your deathbed and send for a preacher. Right. Ha! Might be a little late. Right. I've heard of so many that's passed on. I pray it was well with their soul. Yeah. The most important thing. <coughs> but there was a reason that God had them send for Peter. Now, if you would, go with me into Matthew chapter 16. <coughs> Pray for me. Throw the kingdom. <coughs> chapter 16, verses 17. Let me start there. And he said, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are thy Simon by thought you. Flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my father which is in heaven. He asked him, Who am I? Yeah. He said, Oh, you the Lord. You the Lord. And I say also unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, <laughs> and the gates of hell shall not prevail against me. Amen. It. And I will give unto thee, now listen, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. He didn't give it to the rest. He gave it to Peter. And whosoever thou shalt bound on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. In Acts 2, Peter opened the doors to the Jews by faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter 8, the Lord opened the gates to the Samaritans. When Philip preached the gospel and Peter came down and the Holy Ghost fell upon them. Yeah. Peter had the keys. Yeah. And he was the one that God was going to send. And I believe Cornelius made himself ready. Amen. Yeah. I like it because <clears throat> Peter had a good crowd. Matter of fact, it said that he called all his family yeah, amen. and his friends. He said, come on over. I got somebody coming. My house wouldn't hold all my family. <laughs> and what friends that I have. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I thought he was ready. But you see, there was a problem. They called Peter. Now this is a man that walked on water. Mm -hmm. Amen. Preached the first gospel in the new dispensation. Raised the dead. People were healed in his shadow. But Peter wasn't ready. He wasn't ready to preach the gospel to Canadians. What do you mean? Peter had a problem. He was prejudiced. Right, right. The Jews didn't like the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't even step in that city mm -hmm. unless they had to. <clears throat> yep. God had to prepare Peter for Cornelius was ready mm -hmm. and the field was white Amen. for harvest. Thank you, Lord. But God prepares His ministers. And it said, it came at that very time that they were on their way. <laughs> 
Peter was upon the housetop in prayer. And he became very hungry and would have eaten while they made ready. And he fell into a trance. I like what the Lord done. He dropped it down before him and said, Peter, mm -hmm. kill him and eat him. Yeah. And Peter said, no, Lord. I thought he, anything that's common and unclean. And I love the significance. <clears throat> For the Lord done this three times. Yeah. And how many times did Peter <clears throat> deny yeah. the Lord? Mm -hmm. well, amen. That's a number. Peter had to be corrected. Don't ever think that you don't have to be corrected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. God will correct His children. And it said, and the voice came unto him, Rise, Peter. Not so, Lord. <laughs> he said, What God hath cleansed, let no man, no man call on mm -hmm. God. And Peter was doubting. Yeah. He still didn't understand himself what the vision meant. And behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house <laughs> and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, was lost there. And while Peter thought on the vision, I like it, it reminds me of the lesson we were in. The Lord gave him an answer. And if we'll be patient, this is Daniel was patient. He'll give you an answer yes. of why. And it said, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore, go down, go with them. Don't question, don't doubt it, yes. just do it. And that's all you need to do. Well, we have a problem with that, wouldn't we? Uh -huh. Amen. <laughs> but Peter oh. Yes, Lord. And he went on the journey to Cornelius' house. Peter was ready to preach the gospel. How many times God's man is not ready? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and they wonder why. If we could just be like Cornelius and be a devout Pray and seek God every day, not just on Sunday, but Sunday night to Wednesday. Get dry in between them a couple of days, don't you? Yeah. We need to seek Him every day. But Peter was ready. God had showed that He was not prejudiced against no man. Mm -hmm. And He made it clear in Galatians. I think I've got that here. Still a new Bible. Bear with me. But in Galatians chapter 3, For you are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. For as many as you that have been baptized in Christ and put on Christ, there is neither Jew, no Greek, no black, no white, no yellow. I like that song that we used to sing. What's, all the world are precious in His sight. No one. No one is excluded. But you see, Cornelius was lacking something. But God, He got God's attention to the point, I've got to send someone to preach the gospel to this man. For we know what it says in Ephesians. For by grace are you saved through faith yep. and that not of your saved. It is a gift of God. For you are His work created in Christ Jesus on to good works. It's all been of Cornelius. Now he was prepared to hear the gospel. 
<laughs> and Peter <clears throat> was prepared to preach it. Now, Peter didn't go by himself. Mm -hmm. right. He took some of his fellows with him. It's good that I always like that if you go out visiting or witnessing, go in two. There's a reason. That way, no one, you always got a witness. Mm -hmm. And I think we've got to have a witness because it paid off for Peter, didn't it? Yeah. Because, you see, word gets out quick when you do something for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And word got out quick on Peter. But Peter preached the gospel of Jesus Christ unto him. And what happened? <coughs> the Holy Ghost Amen. fell on them as Thank it did Lord. on the Jews in the day of Pentecost. Right. And they spoke in tongues. I think that was a significant sign then because yeah. otherwise the church wouldn't have believed it. Now I thought about Paul. Now Paul was one that was sent out to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe that they would have agreed if it was Paul that brought the first Gentile in because of who Paul was. It sort of reminded me of David and Solomon. No, you can't build my temple. Mm -hmm. you got blood on your hands. Yeah, amen. Your son will. And Peter brought the first Gentiles and opened the door of faith to the church. And the reason I look in Acts 4.12, you know, he was seeking God. Yeah. But what was... Why were the Jews and why were the apostles condemned? Not because they were preaching about God. Were they? Right. No. They were taken in and chastised because they were speaking about Jesus. Yes. Amen. And that's why in 4 and 12 it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men where we must yes. be saved. And he brought Jesus into their house. Right. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. I love what Brother Rick said. They but one way. Yeah. And Jesus is the way. That's right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. And if you don't know Him, you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All you have Thank to you do Lord. is call upon His name. And I like because all of it says it's one thing to believe, and He says, "Then I want you to testify what unto the Lord with thy mouth." Yes. Amen. And Cornelius and the whole family did. And they said, what was there to keep us from being baptized? I want that baptism. <laughs> and they all were baptized. So I'm sure that got out. And I just want you to know, if you don't know the Lord, and if you don't know, it's a wonderful chapter to study. Yes. Because it will speak to your heart. And if you don't know Him, if you would get us an invitation song, please. Thank you, Lord. All you got to do is be like Cornelius. He was lost. He didn't know Jesus. But he knew there was a God. Mm -hmm. And I believe that everyone knows there's a heaven and a hell. Yes. They might not like to admit it. Mm -hmm. But they know it. And they know there's a God. So if you don't know Him in a personal, wonderful way, this is your opportunity. Yeah, thank you Lord. 65.